Oh, my God. 
Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's good to see you. First announcement, very important. Our annual meeting, part one, will be held on Sunday, December 6th at noon on Zoom. You'll be receiving information on how to connect and the info will be available in the office. You can email or call close to December 6th. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve worship will be this Wednesday at 7.30 inside. It will be live streamed for all who want to stay as safe as possible. Um, <clears throat> we will keep in our thoughts and prayers Marie Kalin and her family. Marie had emergency hip surgery uh, yesterday or Thursday, I believe, and came through it well. But she did test positive and um, they're rechecking that. So again, we will keep people who have been infected with COVID um, or are recovering in our thoughts and prayers. Um, the Marie Kitashima funeral will be rescheduled for the spring as several family members have tested positive. So with that, we are ready for Shout, right? Yes, Shout to the North.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right, and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. that you guys are. Today's children's time is going to be on the gospel and it talks about Jesus. And Jesus is once again trying to teach his disciples the obvious and in their own way, they're not seeing the obvious. So he decides to really make a graphic for them. And he says, <laughs> and he says, you know, watch, out. watch, watch the tree. Out. <laughs> and he says, you know, I really, I can't see you, but you know, I can't see you, but I can tell that you're hungry. Here, have an apple, okay? And I really hope you get some really good food soon. If I can do anything else for you, please let me know. And then Jesus says, you know, I can't see you either, but I can see you're thirsty. So here, here's a bottle of water for you. And then Jesus says, I can't see you, you're a stranger, but I can welcome you, and welcome you I do. And Jesus says, I can't see you, you're sick though, so I do hope you feel better. I got some, look, I got some Spider-Man Band-Aids for you, and just if that doesn't heal it, I have some chicken soup too. And if you need anything else, please don't hesitate to ask, I'd be happy to help you. And then finally he says, Jesus says, you know what? I can't see you either, but I know you're in prison and I can pray for you and I'm compassionate towards you. And you know, I want you to know I really care about you. And so this lesson isn't necessarily about helping your friends and the people that you know well and the people that you love. It's really about helping all those that you can't see. And when you can see them for their essence and who they really are, guess what my my friends my young st paul's friends then you see jesus so please this week and in the weeks following as we're going into the thanksgiving christmas new year please welcome those that you really can't see 
All this we pray in your name. Amen. says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the stray, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd and my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us say Psalm 95 responsibly. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for I made it and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. The second reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to happen which, to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? What is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Holy wisdom, holy word. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep 
from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king to, will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Before I start my sermon proper, I wanted to just note that today is St. Cecilia Day, the patron saint of musicians. So thank musicians from a distance. Yeah. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today's Gospel reading, The Last Judgment, is like a wellness check. Its purpose is not to condemn or scare, but to provide a snapshot of our overall health, development, and growth that should lead to new habits and ways of life. Just as our doctor wants us to flourish, so too does our Creator, Redeemer, Judge, and King. It is Christ the King Sunday. The Last Judgment is not a parable, but the main thrust is the same as the previous three parables that we've heard over the last few weeks. The call is to do right at all times. The image of the Son of Man one day separating sheep from goats is a diagnostic tool designed to inspire faithfulness to root out self-centered living and help each of us measure who and where we are as we grow in likeness of Christ. In fact, the wellness check is so important that throughout this entire teaching section of Matthew, the negative warnings are presented in a more abrasive manner, in more abrasive detail than the positive affirmations telling the story so that the eventual outcome of misguided attitudes and choices will not, and in fact cannot happen, because we now know better. Jesus teaches that what and whom we choose make a difference. Jesus shows us clearly and forcefully that those who think there are no consequences to action are mistaken. In a world that seems too big to be changed, our lives have more meaning and value than we might imagine at times. 
Thankfully, our choices are not the only shaper or the primary shaper even of the future. They are critical, however, alongside the witness of a great deal of scripture, which points to God's grace and love being ultimately so powerful and irresistible that all are saved. Matthew lifts up the importance of what we do with our lives. Why? Because how we spend our time and whom we actively love and do not love provide a diagnostic image of our overall health. God created the world out of an abundance of love, like a bubbling fountain. God is love and overflows with love. In creation, God gives God's self, and in sending Jesus and the Holy Spirit, God repeatedly and generously pours out love upon all people, showing us God's own self as well as who we are created in the image of this freeing, giving God, we freely share. Because this is what it means to be created in God's image. In particular, we love those unable to give back. And we do not try to earn God's love. We give out of thanksgiving for what God has already done for us. You know, it can be easy to read this passage and miss the gospel as we watch the sheep and the goats being separated for eternity. We might think that this is simply another call for humanitarian work on behalf of those at the margins of society. And that would lead us to understand that we earn or achieve our salvation. Instead, Matthew shows us that salvation is something we discover, often when we least expect it. In Matthew, the righteous are surprised to realize they had cared for the king of creation. They had simply shared what they had with those in need. And the unrighteous are surprised that they missed an opportunity to love and care for the king. Had they known who was among them, then they would have done the right thing. The gospel provides a wellness check for all of us and maybe a warning to those living in unhealthy, self-centered ways. We are reminded again of who and what is to be central or king in our life. Christ is to reign first in our hearts. Loving those for whom Jesus died, particularly those who are hungry thirsty, naked, ill, or homeless, or in prison, is our response to the freedom we have in Christ. It's what we're freed for. We may not like wellness checks or warnings, but we need them. And when we get a good checkup, it's a wonderful surprise. That's what God always has in store for us, a wonderful surprise. It's like getting a lollipop from the doctor.
prayed together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. rages. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity, to, our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord, our shepherd, be with St. Paul's call committee as they look for the best pastoral candidate for St. Paul's. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Thank you for saints now departed who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, today we pray for all who are ill, especially all those around the world suffering from or recovering from COVID-19. We pray also for our sister Marie as she heals from her hip surgery. Strengthen them and help them know and feel your love. Hear us, O oh God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen.
May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God's sovereign Savior and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. See you next week, St. Paul's. <laughs>